I think this is about the new hail season. It is, yeah. So we, we announced um, in the lunchtime seminar that we're producing a new edition, a new version, um, authored by none other. Co-authored, really, because the all the background section has been rewritten by the Warlord team. So it's um, uh, a, a new book, and I've rewritten the rules and added some new ones. Um, but uh, so the background section has been done in-house, um, and it looks very snazzy from what I've seen of it. Did, did you bring anything along to show these people, or are we just I, going I to... I had it in our seminar earlier, and it's up in the studio for everybody oh, okay. to have a good look through. So that's, uh, we're, we're kind of 90% finished on it. It's not quite ready to go to print. So you might see the odd missing caption or glaring error. Uh, no extra cost. <laughs> Uh, but yes. absolutely, come and have a look. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Or would you like me to fetch it so you can go through it? Ah, uh, can do. It's, uh, uh, it might, ha might serve a little, might be helpful. You do that. I'll be right back. Don't break them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, um, I figured that uh, people would want to know what's changed, so I've, uh, I've brought my, uh, my brief with me. This is the brief I was given, uh, and, uh, which I agreed with all the games, so I've got it. At least I can uh, uh, refer to that because actually, as always with these things, I finished it quite a long time ago. Uh, and Guy will know what this is like. Uh, you're perpetually doing a magazine, and people say, "Oh, it's a great magazine." You go, "Which one was that?" <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and, and it's a bit like that with um, when you when you're doing a, a, a big the rules project. Routine. That'd be me, sir. Oh, okay. Me, sir. I'll have that, sir. Thank you, sir. There you go. Did you want any sugar? Oh no. Oh no. It's very working class. Um, click work computer, zub, zub, zub. Um, yeah, so um, uh, y you do tend to forget, hence I brought the, uh, uh, this along. And uh, here's Mr. Sawyer with the uh, printout of the, which I imagine is a PDF. Ta da! Oof. Right. I imagine you guys play or at least are interested in Hail Season. <laughs> yeah, and um, you know the original one came out. I, I, I actually had a look. It was eleven years ago. Yeah, well, we're fifteen years old, so yeah, what about a tally? It, it was would. our first book. No, second, wasn't it? Black powder came out first. We did black powder and supplements for that. We did bolt action. That came later. Was it later? Was yeah. it after our season? Okay. So we made a load of imperial romans in plastic and and celts. I thought, what would go well with that is a book about Napoleonics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And such is the way at Warlord Games. <laughs> <laughs> a whim of iron as they say. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Well bolt action was uh, a bolt action. Click. Black powder was um, something that me and Jervis put together with the Perry twins whilst we were still at Games Workshop. And we were going to print it through Warhammer Historical War Games. And then Games Workshop jumped all over that. That fun nonsense. So uh, uh, John was, I'd say kind enough, but eager, eager to <laughs> acquire it. So uh, we, we gave it to John, and John published it despite the fact at that point all Warlord Games had was um, Romans and Celt. Yeah. But at the time he said, wouldn't it be good to do an ancient version? Especially now that Games Workshop have jumped up and down on WAP. Yeah. Which they did. I'm seeing a theme. Yeah, I'm seeing a theme. So, um, uh, so I adapted the black powder system to Hail Caesar, as you guys know, and that's what it became. What I've done with the second edition is tidied it up and added some stuff. So it's not a rewrite. It's not a throw the baby out with the bathwater job. It, it really was a case of taking the existing rules text, smartening it up a little bit, covering things that um, have hitherto in the past had occasion to ask, uh, to pose questions. You know, the, the inevitable Q&As. And one of those things, for example, is um, the rules for uh, proximity. People are always asking how proximity rules work. So we, I've re, I rephrased the, the rules. I didn't change them. I've rephrased it. And we've done some new diagrams, which hopefully will make it a little clearer, which should stop people asking. Um, apart from that, 
Uh, yeah, no, there's not a lot. There are most little mods and things like that. I can go through them one by one if we like. But, uh, additional stuff. Yeah, and there's quite a bit of additional stuff. So, when we started we thought, wouldn't it be good, wouldn't it be good if we could include the points value system and the core information about the army lists in the book? Because I did that later, and I did the, war, uh, the uh, Hail Caesar Armies books afterwards. So what I've done is I've taken that information and put it into the main book. So together with, I think it's got, I asked the guys to put in some sample army lists, so I assume they have, because I didn't there actually. There are samples, yeah. 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 So uh, you've actually got sample army lists with points values and the points value system described all in the book, which is a useful. Useful. The other thing uh, we did was um, we, uh, we thought, wouldn't it be good if the rules extended a bit beyond the uh, uh, mid 13th century, which is currently where I set the limit. So I've written an appendix on later medieval uh, battles, it's covering roughly uh, 1350 up to about 1500, um, which was interesting because I mean, I, I have used Hail Caesar for um, uh, both the uh, Wars of the Roses, Hundred Years' War, and actually the Burgundian Wars as well. So um, there was a little bit of uh, experience there, and I was able to re basically, without changing the rules, I just slightly re readjusted everything together. So you have a, diff a slightly different relationship between the infantry and the cavalry, because uh, as I've described in the in the introduction to it, you've got a as I'm sure most of you know, you have a very uh, you have a very cavalry-centric Western European tradition in the 11th to 12th, even 13th centuries, and then from the mid 13th century, uh, beginning of the early 13th century, but uh, for, uh, sorry, the mid, mid 14th century, you tend to get an infantry, infantry tradition where the infantryman becomes the, uh, the more, more effective. So, so I rebalanced everything slightly. Um, introduced some new rules for things like pikes, arquebus, handguns, um, pike block formations as used by the Swiss, Germans, Flemish, and so on. Um, cannons, obviously. So how big that is. And that, you'll find that at the, it sh should be at the back. To medieval battles. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, new formations. Yeah, and so on. Some nice and some nice photographs, courtesy of the Perry twins, who have got a large um, uh, hundred years war range, of course. Um, and in addition to that, I've written a whole new section on assaults and sieges. Uh, it's not. It's not a. Let's play a siege game. What you're going to do in month one? Let's starve them out. It's not like it's not you. You remember, don't you, guy? Yeah. <laughs> Are they starving yet? <laughs> I got a guy wrote the uh, siege supplement for WAB many years ago, which was very popular in its day, and actually focused more on assaults as well, didn't it? Really? Yeah. Um, and that's what I've done. I've I've taken the notion of that final assault onto a, uh, a, a fortification, which could be something fairly simple, like a Roman um, uh, border limes, or it could be a real fortification of some sort, you know, a castle. Um, and, I, and I've written that up. So you've got rules for siege engines, uh, using ladders, assaults, moving units up onto um, ramparts and beyond, and fighting within cities, all that sort of thing. Um, and again, I thought, well, you'll we'll be happy to sort that out in a page or two. <laughs> but once you start doing anything that is an exception to the normal rules, where you can't rely on the normal formations, then you have to write quite a lot of text just to just to cover the situation. Um, that's that one, isn't it? Yeah, moving to and from walls, gateways and breaches, fighting inside breaches, fortifications, siege towers, engagements on ramparts, da 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 da, bit on undermining, bit on bombardment. Yeah, that's right. So it, it, it's it's usable, but it's not. It wouldn't preclude us writing a complete supplement at some time in the future if we wanted to. Or if someone, someone volunteered to do it. Somebody with experience. Of someone debate. with experience, yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> the same is true of the medieval section, actually. Although, 
you know it. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. It's about ten pages. But that could easily be an entire supplement on something like the Hundred Years' War. Well, as, you, as luck would have it, we do have a War of the Roses supplement being written. Yeah, OK. The author's here today. Oh, OK. Oh. Right, OK. Uh, we haven't got anybody for a Hundred Years' War yet, and I know um, Darren Bowley, our publishing manager, is eager to hear from anybody who uh, wants to write supplements for Black Powder or uh, sees a pipe shot, etc. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's certainly a... a an opportunity to do something on the Hundred Years War. Yeah, but Wars of the Roses first? Wars of the Roses before that. Yeah, OK, well we should look forward to that. Have you finished yet? Is it done? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, OK. Um, what apart from that? I think the biggest section apart from that is a new terrain. There's a, I was asked to write more on terrain. I, if you, you, you probably realise, but the, the original Hail Caesar terrain section is very kind of yeah, here's some rules of what we use, make up your own if you want something more complicated. And people kept um, asking for something more complicated, so not, not my thing to be honest. I, 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 like, I look at a set of rules and I go, second edition, opportunity to cut stuff out and make it simpler. But no, it never works that way. Um, so I've added in more terrain rules. So rather than having just one type of wood, I've gone for light woods, uh, ordinary woods, woods that are dense and then woods that are impassable. So in a sense you've got four coniferous deciduous, coniferous deciduous mixed, yeah. tropical. <laughs> there is a t there's definitely a tree section here somewhere. Yeah, it's quite long. I think it should be at the back. Yeah. So, I, thought, Seems I thought that's something that needs to go in the back because um, it's very much a pick and mix. I'm not mad keen on complexity when it comes to terrain. I can never remember. What you need is a rule book that tells you these things. Oh, no, I can never find it. There we go. There we go. There we go. Yeah, oh, so that's a new terrain section. Yeah, and I did that, as I say, at the back, almost in an appendix, so you know you can pick and mix it. And it's got um, a little bit more on things like bridges and fighting over bridges. It's one of the Oddly enough, I blame the Perrys. Whenever you play a war game around at the Perrys, there's always a 14-foot table with a river down the middle. It's just the way they play. I don't know, they're everything obsessed. But um, you invariably find yourself fighting over a bridge. And you, ever, you, you can't fight over a bridge because you can't get into a column formation. And if you're in column formation, you can't charge. So it, it all gets a bit messy. Yeah. So I, I, I covered that. And at the same time, I was able to use the same rules for fighting through breaches. Now you mention it. I hadn't really put that together, but every time I play with the berries, there has been a bridge. Yeah, there would be. With a bottleneck. It's, it's uh, always a bottleneck. You always end up fighting over the bridge. Didn't they sell bridges by any chance? <laughs> you think so? We sell bridges. Ooh, there we go. We do a nice one. So I've covered off all that. So that's all by the way of extra rules. Um, and then I've got this crossed out because this was my proposal. I said we could do a fantasy appendix with an introduction, rules for classic races spells and flying things and we ran out of space so we haven't done that yet, um, yet. but um, it, it's one of those things that uh, when we did uh, LCs originally we all said oh you know this would make quite a good fantasy game and I went oh god I've spent 30 years of my life writing fantasy games I'm not sure I want to do another one should be good at it by now though. you'd think so wouldn't you instead of <laughs> instead of tired and jaded <laughs> <laughs> oh another pixie oh no <laughs> um, so I, we didn't do that but um, Oddly enough, I did start writing a fantasy adaption for Hail Season years ago, and I ended up adapting that into um, Wards of Erebon, which is a skirmish-based fantasy game. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's not beyond the ken of man to do it. I think there's a lot of people out there that obviously remember uh, Warhammer Fantasy Battle as it used to be. Yeah, the, the, the rank and file, I'm sure most people in this room have um, participated. I know I have and loved it. Um, and, and to be able to kind of replicate that, as I think you mentioned, that um, Games Workshop has gone the other way, primarily. I don't know. Uh, I don't pay any attention. <laughs> so I hear you. Um, so yeah, no, well, maybe, maybe in the future. Yeah, it's possible. Um, yeah, uh, and other than that, some new rules for, um, some new special orders for the generals, things like that. And then some specifics um, which people asked me to cover, which we can perhaps do as Q&A more than anything else. Uh, da -da 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 -da. And quite a bit more on setting up a game, deploying um, with some scenarios uh, and uh, 
I also wrote some stuff on how to play one-on-one -on -one games because uh, the, the guys, Darren in particular, was very keen on that. I'd, obviously, they've no mates. So, well, what I wrote a multiplayer game, the multiplayer game does rely on you having at least three friends to play with. Um, so, I was asked to write a version where you could play one-on-one. -on -one. I, I, I thought I was going to get asked to play a solo version at one point, but you know, I think they would. Uh, which I've done by a set of adaptions. Um, oddly enough, the adaptions make, if, if you use them, and they are alternative, you, know, you don't have to. You can play a one-on-one -on -one game using the standard rules perfectly easily. Um, you just don't get that interaction between the players, which uh, uh, this is set up to encourage. Really. Um, but if you do choose to do it, what it does is it makes the game a little bit more predictable. So you don't get that thing where you you're failing to move in a turn. Because failing to move when you're one of three on a side... It's funny. It's funny. When you're one of one, it's not so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Can't blame yeah. anybody else. No, right, exactly. Uh, so, um, I did I did a revised order set, and it's actually much more like Warmaster. I don't know if you've ever played Warmaster. But in Warmaster, which this is derived from to a large extent, you, 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 you test to order, and if you move, you move and then you can test again and then you can move it again and then you test again. So rather than just testing the once and making one, two or three orders, you test each time and you're gambling on being able to move further. Uh, and I've sort of reintroduced that. So I've almost like reused the Warmaster system. Not quite literally because I thought it would be too fussy, but uh, it, it, it's similar. I think Darren, uh, so the publisher manager Darren, who um, Rick alludes to, was very keen for um, it to be more of a, a, a gateway. So anybody who's seen big games of Hell Caesar, they're absolutely glorious, a fantastic sight with you know, hundreds, if not more, miniatures aside. Not the easiest thing to get into from scratch. Yeah. So I think uh, Darren was keen for us to have uh, a stepping stone, something where you could play a smaller game with the same similar yeah. rules while you build up a massive one. It, it's a funny thing to do because both Black Panda and Hail Caesar come from a place that's mature. You've got armies, you've got a reasonable size table. You know, you it, they're, 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 they're actually written for people to play multiplayer games or club big club games with their mates, and that's where the strength of the game lies. They're not stepping stones to the hobby. Oh, what's a Roman then? Um, they don't work like that very well. Uh, it, It'd be interesting to see whether that adaption into a one-on-one -on -one game has any appeal to people, because I'm not sure whether it will or not. It's, it's a, a small edition. Oh, it's a, it's a very, it's, it's, it's a page or two of text. Yeah. And it's actually that particular rule is, is just a paragraph. There are lots of other suggestions and rules to do with playing one-on-one. -on -one. Um, well, one, one, one of the strengths of Hail Caesar and Black Powder is that it's very much a, a toolbox game. Yeah. You know, th th it's been built by by Rick and Jervis you know, for a number of years from you know, games that they wanted to play and been firmed up that way. But there's a lot of options in there. And, and like most games, we're not going to be prescriptive and say, you must play it like this. Here's a, a set of guidelines that work for, for us. Your game, if you don't like something, change it or drop it, or, you know. Very much that. We certainly don't expect to tell you how to play Yeah, that's games. why it's written long. It's got a lengthy set of rules. And I know some uh, I know some people don't like rules that are written long. You know, they want rules which are written short and bullet pointed. But... Uh, the kind of people who don't get paid by the word. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if only. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, that's fine. I can write rules like that. But it's, um, it's just not how I do things. It's, it's not... It, it, and it's not within the spirit of this particular game. And it's quite difficult to describe the order, the process of giving orders and moving troops short, because it's quite a, it, it's, it, it's a conversation between you and the other player. It's not a, not a fixed rule, you know, uh, the thing has to be judged. Mm. Yeah. So is there anything you guys would like to know about the new version? Or Hail Caesar in or general. Or Hail Caesar. Or Hail Caesar in general. Are the old Army books still usable? Yes. Good question. Absolutely. 
yeah I did it so they are I've changed the terminology on some things particularly uh, I think it was I think it was pike phalanx in the original version I used the word phalanx for a special rule but I think I did it late in the day and I'd already used the term phalanx for a formation so the word phalanx is used for two different things which is mildly annoying particularly when you then want to apply the phalanx rule to things which are not a phalanx formation not that difficult you know and the Greeks referred to a hoplite formation as a phalanx rather than a, you know, a, a phalangite uh, formation so I changed the terminology and I used pike block I think pike for the phalanx. pike no pike, pike block because the phalanx special rule just talk amongst yourselves <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the phalanx is the special rule, so we had to change the formation name to pie block. Um, unless the editors changed it back again, in which case I'll beat them soundly. Um, but because it's been a change from the army books, I had to make a point of saying pie block, also known as a pike phalanx, especially in some of, some of the earlier... Uh, uh, yeah, there you go. I know because I've, I've just proofed it, so I <laughs> Yeah, and you know. Also be referred to as a pipe phalanx, however, because there are separate special rules called phalanx. The term pipe block is used to work confusion. Note in some Hell Caesar supplements, you'll also find the same formation described as a pipe phalanx. It's things like that. That's, that's a good question. I'm, I'm doing a last sweep on this tomorrow, yeah. and I'm, I'll just have another look for that. Yeah, and it doesn't matter if there's the odd reference. It's, it's not big. It's not a deal breaker. People will know. Um, so yes, is the, is the broad answer. You can use all the supplements, um, including the uh, including the army list of books. Uh, and I've covered off any any changes in um, terminology. I think that's about the only one I can remember, to be honest. Yeah, it's ostensibly the same game. But it's, it's yeah, I refuse to change it. Up. <laughs> well, if it's if it's not broken, indeed. Um, with the possibility of uh, fantasy expansion, would that mm. mean sort of fantasy creatures added to historical armies or completely historical factions? Well, the way I did Erewhon was a was a um, I don't know if any of you have got got of Erewhon. Erewhon's a skirmish game, but um, uh, I wrote a generic system and I included a how to work out your own armies section in it. So, uh, and then I did some samples, which include historical, so basically uh, Celt fantasy, um, Irish in, in essence, um, uh, and as well as a Greek mythological kind of kind of based one, and then I did some classic fantasies like uh, goblins, orcs and goblins, dwarfs, beastmen. So yeah, I'd probably do the same. Could there be a range of models to go with it as well? Obviously, uh, skeletons and skeletons. I don't think Warlord are very keen on making fantasy things. No, I think, I think um, if we were going to go down that route, we'd probably base it, base it very much on mythology. So you'd have your standard Greek army, but you'd add in okay. great heroes or mythological creatures, rather than it be, you know, um, let's let's remake any old kind of fantasy system. game. Mythic America. Stuff seems to, be well, to a degree, yeah. they did their own range, and then yeah. they approached us and asked us if we could use the Era One game as the basis for their game. Yeah. So they already had the range. Um, what I, I would do something generic, which would include those mythological elements, which would allow. Were I to do it, I mean, you know, to be honest, I'm not sure. I've, there are no plans. Yeah, there are it's no just, plans. It's, it's a possibility in the future. The other option is uh, I knock off something very quickly and put it on a website without them noticing. Yeah. Always, always likely. Can't be trusted clearly. Yeah. Well, my Warlords of Verawan uh, website, which is rigbriestly.com, uh, has lots and lots of army lists in addition to the ones in the book, as well as some special rules and downloads and things. I've not updated it for quite a while, mostly because since COVID, the only people I play fancy with have all been in lockdown or doing other things. So it's, uh, so I, I, you know, not, not really had the opportunity to do it. Anybody else have any questions? main one's going to be, when can we get, I've got to be little hands on it. Uh, to be confirmed, um, back end of the year, early part of next year, will be the kind of um, area we're looking at. Obviously, we're, we're dealing with um, printers 
and um, obviously the world's in a very different place. <laughs> I'm very uh, familiar with that challenge. Yeah, so yes. with yeah. Uh, with Brexit and carriage and all the rest of it. Yeah, fun, um, fun, fun. So. Uh, we're we're nearly over the line on on getting the the book finished um, a new starter set etc cetera, etc cetera. so, set. so I, I just say watch this space in the next um, uh, few weeks we'll be announcing all on the Wardod newsletter okay. we don't have a hard date for it right now I think the emphasis of this particular game in the background at least is on the Republican Romans rather than the Imperial Romans isn't it? It's a yeah so it'll be um, yeah the starter set for instance will be our plastic Caesarean Romans yeah, so chain mail yeah. Montefi Montefitino helmet rounded shields rather than uh, the classic Imperial with the segmented armour um, Any more? Um, obviously I'm slightly biased in, in historical periods at the moment, but what is the one thing that you would like to see a supplement for one of the new Hail Caesar? Who, me? Yes. Parthians. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> I'm interested. My, my, my thing has always been Imperial Rome of the 1st and 2nd century AD. That's kind of where I live. So anything beyond that, I could have taken interest in, but that's my field of study, if you see what I mean. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of where I... So you've been looking at sort of uh, Parthians, um, I suppose, Pompeii, Antonius, 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 Antonius. Yeah, but I think, they're, I think they're, yeah, uh, Armenia was fought over, but um, the um, Pontic kingdoms, I think, were... Yeah, so exactly, just before. It, it's, just, it, it's the end of the Republic, really. But... Um, uh, the first, second century AD, the main opponents of the Romans in the west would be Germans and their ilk, and in the east it would be the Parthians. So that's why. Uh, and by the time the Parthians get kicked out and the Sasanians take over, I think you're really into the third century and the crisis of the third century and the end of the Imperial Rome and the beginning of the Dominant. So it. it Again, I was okay. really interested in the dominant. John Lambshead would agree with you. He's very much into that. We do. We do, we do some, but not much. The trouble with the Parthians is there's not a lot. Of, there's not a lot of actual evidence about what their armies look like beyond the um, beyond horse archers and cataphracts. And you go, what did their infantry look like? Did they have any? Well, they inherited the Seleucid Empire, so you know they were they would have had infantry. Would they have had Greek or Hellenic troops based on the the settlements that they'd basically taken over? I, mean, I don't know the answer to that. But probably they would have had some sort of militia infantry. With mean, the later Sasanians had infantry, but they were they, they did tend to they, they tend to turn up more or less for the, for the sake of it. They weren't the no fighting component. But then again, Sasanians are talking the third century, by which time really everything had moved into cavalry. The Roman armies were basically, but at least the hard hitting parts of the Roman armies were cavalry after the third century. So who knows? And I think that's why you don't tend to get Parthian armies. Yeah. But there you go. Anybody else have anything they want to talk about when we've got in Hail Caesar, either the new edition or the, the Ranging General? Why do most of them not have BCs in the kits? Say what, sorry? Why do most of the kits not have BCs in the kits? Yeah, cheapskates. <laughs> it's something that we're, we're actively changing at the moment. Um, over the course of 15 years, we've had a number of different ways of producing models. Um, in terms of plastics uh, and, and some ranges uh, like black powder haven't had the bases in. Some ranges like pike and shot have. Uh, it's one of the things that we identified uh, a few months ago is we need to be more consistent with that. Yeah, personally I like to use MD MDF bases. Uh, one, of the, one of the problems is that, it, that there is no basing style so some people like to have them on rounds. 
and then use the, the MDF Sabot basis on the of skirmish. Some people, I don't know, the, the, the Perry's basis have to have a really tight formation. On Realistic, like 15, yeah. 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 Kind of inherited the 20 by 20 that a lot we've always played on for uh, when we used to be at Games Workshop with Warhammer Fantasy Battle. And, um, so I don't think there's a, a right and wrong, but we've tied our colours to the mast and said we're going to be doing uh, 20 by 20 and then um, 25 by 50 for cavalry um, because it's just a, a kind of standard that a lot of people have, but you can easily go with any. Shape of yeah, yeah I, I, I've gone with most of mine are 20 by 20. I used to base to 15 mil, but uh, most figures these days you can't get them on 15 too mil. Big. Yeah. They're too wide. Yeah. They're flailing their arms around too much. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, uh, you do, uh, 20 by 20 looks all right. A lot of warlord games, um, Imperial Romans anyway, they vary in size tremendously. So some of them fit very nicely on 15s and some don't. Different. You'd never fit on a 15 mil, <laughs> 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 friend. Whereas he's a 15 mil miniature. Well, oh, there. <laughs> right? The laughter never starts. <laughs> you see why I don't turn up very often. Don't you? <laughs> Anybody have anything they want to ask? They're obviously keen to get away. They are, they are. <laughs> earlier about. Uh, how you couldn't find people to write certain supplements. Mm. Um, how much experience are you looking for in that? Well, you don't have to be a published author. You just need to know the you need to know the period particularly well and um, be able to write cleanly. Um, you know, we're not allowed to ask for um, Shakespeare. Most most of the books that we have written are, are done by hobbyists. And they get they get yeah. delivered in a, a variety of different states. Some are quite clean and easy, and some have Darren beating his head against the wall. <laughs> um, but he, he does his level best to, to help all prospective authors through the process, explain what we need in terms of a synopsis, what you must cover, uh, what we're interested in, what we're not interested in. Uh, and I know he's gone through a lot of that recently. I know we've got a lot of Hail Caesar supplements in the works. Uh, some that have been written, some that are being written, some that are being commissioned. So, uh, yeah, I'd urge anybody who's interested in writing um, a supplement for Hail Caesar, Pike and Shot, or Black Powder gets in touch with her and asks for Darren Bowley. That would make it all his fault. Hmm. Yeah, that's right. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what, if you, if you can, unless you're keen on getting away, in which case, <laughs> feel free to leave. I'll, um, I'll just whiz through some of the changes I've done, just to give you an idea. Okay, do. Um, allow initiative to open order units in sight of enemy. So, currently you can only use initiative if you're within 12 inches of, the, of, the, uh, of an enemy unit. Now, if you're an open order unit, you can use your initiative if you can see the enemy. So, that allows um, a, a, a more free and easy movement with skirmishers, for example. Um, allow close ranks to all infantry in battle line. So, currently only heavy infantry can do close ranks. We extended that to include medium infantry as well, um, simply on the basis we wanted to put a little bit more of a division between medium infantry uh, types and light infantry types. So light infantry uh, have certain advantages, but we wanted medium infantry to have something going for them. There was, no, there was, there was a feeling that they were um, uh, internally second best. I pointed out they're supposed to be an eternal second best, but you know, this at least gives them that um, that ability to go go into a defensive formation, i.e., minus one to hit, plus one where I'll save. Um, allow units to turn to face flank and uh, or rear if charged um, on test. Um, this is something which I added because it was a bit of a wrinkle, really, but I quite like it. Currently, if you have a unit that's not cavalry to infantry that's charged to its flank or rear, it can't turn to face. What I've done is I've made it, you can try and turn to face, but you will always be disordered. So regardless of whether you succeed in turning to face or not, you become disordered. So it's a bit of a gamble, but it does allow you to at least take into account 
where you've been charged inside or rear, you've got a chance of, of facing the target, albeit fa fighting disorders. Um, I've also put in rules which make it clear that during a draw, if you're fighting to your side or, f or rear, you can turn. So units which are, um, which either win, for that matter, or draw a combat, currently they can't turn to face the, uh, the, the attacker. Now I've said if you've got room, you can do so, which is something that you see on the internet a lot. And generally speaking, people play that you can turn, as I've described, but that's not the rule as it stands in the original book. Um, I've added two new special orders to generals. Uh, one is a uh, general advance, where the general basically gives an order and the whole army moves forward one move, um, which is a, uh, and bearing in mind a general gets a reroll, which is a way of kind of making the game more predictable for people that want that initial move to be more predictable. Um, it doesn't do anything more than get you closer to the enemy, so I wouldn't say it's a, uh, a massive game changer, but it stops the army becoming disordered, fragmented I mean, in the first, uh, first turn. And then I've added a, a rule I've called Where is Your Courage, where the general can actually rally a unit from a broken division basically goes to the unit, hopefully successfully rallies it, and then it forms a new division or joins the general's division. So um, uh, it's, again, it's a bit of a wrinkle, but it's an interesting one. Um, that's probably about it in terms of the main core rules changes. Change that sort of fling in it. Those are the main rules changes. I might have done the old tinker here and there, but I don't I can't remember the top of my head. Mostly it's rephrasing things which are just weren't entirely clear. Uh, yeah. And that's it. So Do we have any last questions? Before I go in search of another cup of tea. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you Rick. You're welcome. You're welcome.